Let's talk configuration. A project is a representation of your app in Sentry, which your app's events will be sent to. I'll give some tips on this now, but you can find this info later here in our guide. The general rule for what to create a project for is your Sentry projects should be in a one-to-one -one ratio with your apps, with the definition of an app here being a repository of code. So if I have a code base for this React app, then make it a project. This Sentry project gives me a DSN key, which I put in my code base where I initialize the Sentry SDK, so that only errors from that app come to this project. If I have a second React app that has its own code base and build process, then make that a different project. This applies to microservices as well. If you have multiple backend microservices, then create a project for each of those microservices. Now for monolithic architectures, a few things. If your monolith has multiple code bases, then create a project for each of those code bases and initialize the SDK in each of those. If your monolith is one code base, but runs discreetly in different ways, for instance, one instance of it powers an API and another instance of it powers web pages, then create a project for each of those instances. If your monolith is one code base and one project, then if you're concerned about the alerts coming into too many developers and teams at once, then we'll show you in the next section how to leverage alerts and issue owners to make sure that alerts get it routed based on where in your code base the errors are happening. So you get them in the hands of the right people responsible for those areas of the code. You can also view a list of the projects and create them by going through the organization settings here. This brings us to our next entity in configuration, which is Teams. The projects whose events you can see are governed per team in Sentry. One team can have multiple projects. And by being a member on that team, you now have access to that team's projects. So these members for this team here have access to these projects here. And projects can be shared across multiple teams. Here are all the teams that I'm on, therefore I get access to the projects of each of these teams. The next entity we're going to cover is releases. A release in Sentry represents a version of your code that is deployed. You can see how many new issues you're having per release, you can make as few or as many releases as you want, whether that's per day, week, or month, or for every version of your code. When we get to the section on Discover, we'll look at an enhanced report where you can see error accounts across releases along with any associated metadata. To take full advantage of this, you need to set the release number when initializing your SDK. So let's take a look at that. Use the release property here and put the version of your code here. You'll also want to set the release using our Sentry CLI tool during your build process. This allows you to take advantage of our suspect commits feature and source code versioning integration we saw earlier. You run these commands, and this allows you to see the commits and files change per release as well, which we'll see in a second. We have additional information on releases here on this page for our CLI tool. So let's take a look at a release that got made. You can see what issues are new for this release versus those that were marked as resolved. You can see what files were changed for this release, what were the commits, and then who were the specific authors behind these commits. If you're viewing an individual issue, you can also see in which release the issue first happened, as well as what is the re latest release it's happened in. And the facet map down here will show you what percentage of releases this issue is happening in. Our next entity for configuration is environments. Don't forget to specify the environment when initializing your Sentry SDK. This way your events are associated to the environment in which they occurred. And you can view your events by environment using this top level filter here. And we'll see this kind of filter in many other places in the Sentry, like Discover as well as in our alerts. Do not make the mistake of creating a separate project for each of your environments. Project should only be listed once here for the one app that it represents. The last entity is deployments. Deployments are good if you have releases for multiple projects and you want to see that they are deployed together. In that case, you want to set the deployments tag for those releases. It's also good for customers who trigger builds in every commit, which makes a release for every commit, but not all of those builds are getting deployed to production. So in that case, you can use the deployments feature to track when it does go to production. And here's the information on creating deploys. 
you can use this command here.